Coming to you first, the challenger. On my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold trunks with blue and red trim. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, by way of Buenaventura, Colombia, he weighed in at a ready 153 pounds. His record stands at 25 wins, four losses, three draws, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Rank the number one IBF junior middleweight contender, introducing JC Blackino Candelo. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with black trim, hailing from St. Petersburg, Florida. His weight, 153 and one half pounds. His record, 44 wins, three losses, 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two-time world champion and current IBF junior middleweight champion of the world, introducing Ronald Winky Wright. Once again, a referee in charge is Robert Bird. Now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing scheduled. Hey, gentlemen, I gave you instructions in the dressing room. The only thing I'm going to tell you now is when I tell you stop, that means stop whatever you're doing. Give me a clean break. Protect yourselves on the break. Protect yourself at all times. This is a championship fight. I expect fully a championship effort. Let's do it. Candelo's training camp was called Camp jab he will try to turn winky into blinky with a jabbing contest not that easily done because they call it the manly art of self-defense and george there are many better defenders in boxing than winky right uh, two defensive fighters you got a jab you're defensive too well candelo in his recent fights against alfred and kama and angel hernandez was throwing upward of 40 jabs per round Sometimes he exceeds the 100 mark in punches per round. So he'll try to overwhelm Wright with activity. Wright likes to stay within a tight envelope and, and force you to try to break his defense down. Once you fail to do that, he starts to open up. Candela is starting off trying to jab to the body. He was not successful on it right off the bat. Winky is starting to put a lot of pressure on this guy. Yeah, Winky more offensively aggressive earlier than is than is usually the case. Winky doesn't open up this much in the first round in most instances. And there you see the defense as Winky Wright blocks Candela's punches. All those punches blocked by Winky's gloves. Wax Candela with a little right hook inside. Right hook to the body. Now Candela gets a right hand through the guard. Candela, it seems that Winky Wright's got no respect at all for him. None at all. That's when you got to get out there and fight a guy for a couple of rounds and make him give you enough room to do what you intend to do. Candela's better attack, go on, go on the attack just to get some respect. Again, Winky Wright blocking Candelo's punches. That hurt. Winky Wright said no, but it hurt. Yep, and a left cross by Wright and a low blow under the guard, or under the belt, I should say, of Candelo. But it didn't land all that hard. And, and rather than the referee issue a warning, the fighters worked it out between themselves. Candelo says that was low. Wright says you're right. Candelo's got a good right hand. He hurt Winky Wright a little more than he even know. You can see Winky is not pressing as much as he was. Been a little hesitant. Oh, Some, that's right. Sometimes he drew the left thing. hand before he put his weight behind it. That time he just stuck it out there. Yeah, he doesn't want to run into another one of those straight right by Candela. Now Winky starting to lean back as he establishes that defensive mode, which has made him so effective at 154. Candela's been been promoted by my old opponent. Bobby hits, so if he wins this fight, I can say I had an opponent who's got a fighter. <laughs> what was his name, George? Bobby Hitt. Bobby Hitt. You know what George did to Bobby Hitt, Larry? 
tell me. He hit him. <laughs> and he hit him enough to knock him out in the first round. But he's a successful promoter now. He should have been caught. Bobby catches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby, I'm not in debt. <laughs> Breathe, breathe, Damn, breathe, take breathe, this breathe, 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 breathe. Put it on the floor. Work your first two straight punches and then finish up. Bring it up. All right? And keep the jab. Go the jab a little stronger now. And use your feint a little bit more. Right here, Mike. I know, I see. Okay, here we go. No more letting him walk in on you. Jab, long. Jab, long. And that right hand to the body's gonna work all day. Okay? Here we go. Here Again, we go. that's your jab after every combination. That's how you're gonna win these combinations, okay? Deep breath right now. Let's go. One more. Start One more. No One more. So here's that right. He shredded right through Wright's guard, usually an impregnable guard, that he, when he holds his hands up around his face. In what may be something of a record for lowest connect percentage ever in a round one, J.C. Candelo, by CompuBox number, numbers, landed four of 93 punches in the first round. Winky Wright, 25 out of 80, including 13 out of 57 jabs. Candelo getting more aggressive to start the second. And Wright countering in return. Now a solid left by Wright. Candelo with a right to the body. Candelo has done just what he should have done early on. Make this man respect you. Go out there and hurt him. Make him fight you back so then you can operate as a boxer. Minky stepping up the aggression again, though. Lands a solid left to the body. Drives Candelo into the corner. That was some body shot, and Candelo hasn't thrown a punch since. Yeah, he's got hurt a few times. There's another solid body shot by Wright. Right on Candelo's liver. Winky Wright is punishing J.C. Candelo to the body in this round, and Candelo has suddenly stopped throwing punches. And there's a good right hook by Wright. Now Candelo starts to fight back again. Look at the accuracy of Wright there. Well, if Wright is trying to make an impression on everybody in the uh, junior middleweight division, he sure is in this round. You know what? Candelo is a real thin around the waist guy. He's accustomed to being attacked like this and weathering the storm so he can make guys respect him later. He's not being uh, uh, intimidated by this attack by Wright. Seems to have regained his equilibrium. But whether he was intimidated or not, I think he was a little debilitated for a while by the solid body shot that Wright planted into the middle of his stomach. There's a hard right hand by Candela. Wright shakes his head again. That's how you know it landed. Some of these guys are so thin, they've been abused down there with those shots before. They just wait until you stop. Doesn't hurt them like you think it should. Now Candela releasing his hands and throwing freely again as he did throughout round one. Now Robert Bird tells Winky Wright for the first time he's got to keep those punches up. Another borderline punch by Wright. Good flurry by Candela. A lot of guys would have gone away having taken what Candelo has taken so far. Right, keeping constant pressure on Candelo. Free up, free up, free up, now. All the way around the perimeter of the ring from rope to rope. Wright just kept sticking the jab at Candela. Wink, he's dangerous inside. Use your in and out rhythm. If you're flat yeah, foot, water's on the ground, be careful. Stay back there, man. Breathe, champ. Come on, breathe. Breathe. Yeah, keep the. Oh, okay. You don't like it to the body. You don't like it to the yeah. body, and it's opening up the head. So, a little two. One round. Hey, JC. Hey, right away. Hey, too close. Stay long. Stay long. Look at the range. Watch your head, baby. Watch your head. Hey, look at the range. Going? Range and let your hands go. When you're throwing your punches, you're doing great. You're throwing your right hand a little high. Throw it at the chest. Hey, one more range. Here we go. How you feeling? Remember well, you heard up. the corner say to Winky Wright that Candela doesn't like it in the body. Nobody likes those kinds of punches to the body. Check us out. 
Excellent round in CompuBox numbers for Winky Wright, who landed 34 out of 85. Candelo, who went 30 seconds or more without throwing a punch, still threw 97 in the round. Landed 12. So a very low connect percentage so far for J.C. Candelo, who's fought bravely in continuing to release his hands against the durable, well-positioned, fundamentally sound, very sharp Winky Wright. Not once have I seen Candelo lead with a right hand. When you're fighting a southpaw, you got to stick that right hand out. Not all the time with power, just stick it out there. It'd be real successful if he just started leading with his right hand, Candelo. Right goes to the body again. Let's go. Come on. That's on the hip, boy. Let's go. Yeah, man, that's that was now, below the belt. Candelo says it's below the belt. Robert Bird says keep fighting. He didn't see that as a low blow. Yeah, he better start looking because that could be... JC's getting right, hit right on the JC, but maybe his trunks are a little high. JC comes back right at Winky Wright's belt line. Twice. As if to say, okay, if it's good enough for you, it'll be good for me too. Candelo lands a right hand upstairs. That's why a referee got to kick control of these fights. You don't do something, these fellas will start doing things for themselves. Well, Candelo certainly did. Realizing that Bird wasn't going to help him on those shots on the belt line, he went right at the same spot on Winky Wright. Right landing a left. Oh, now Wright looks at the referee as if to say, he's hitting me low. Bird says keep fighting. Wright whacks Candelo with a right hook upstairs. Della, all he's got to do is leave with his right hand and come back with his hook. Things can change that quick. <laughs> leave right hand and a left hook. Instead, he get, catches a straight right down the pipe from right. They are fighting at an exhausting pace. Featherweights would have trouble fighting at this pace. You know, about three years ago, before he fought uh, Vargas, right, was considered a kind of a southpaw boxer, didn't give you much to hit at, and gradually he evolved a more aggressive style behind that defense. Uh, becomes more of a crowd-pleasing fighter and has uh, projected himself into the picture or at least into the conversation. Well, he's definitely no cutie now. Mark your calendars for these upcoming fights. March 6, HBO Latino's Poseo de Oro returns with Juan Gomez Trinidad against Efren Hinojosa. March 8, Vladimir Klitschko, the Ukrainian giant looking for Lennox Lewis, takes on South African Corey Sanders. March 31, on HBO pay-per-view, a big four fight card, a big four fight card headlined by Fernando Montiel against Mark Two Sharp Johnson. And on April 12 on HBO pay-per-view, featherweight champ Marco Antonio Barrera facing veteran southpaw puncher Kevin Kelly. Wiggy Wright is coming so far under with his punches that he hit Candelo in the thigh and then along on the, the belt. And the referee doesn't believe he was hit low. Even as Wright was acknowledging that he hit him low. <laughs> Total through three, right eight out of 237, 33%. Candelo having averaged almost 100 punches around, 294 punches, 98 per round, landing only 9%. Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim, I got it 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing, Ronald Wiki right. Jim, first of all, about the low blows. A low blow is anything below the belly button. Now, J.C. Candelo's got a pair of trunks with the biggest waistband I've ever seen in my life. It's certainly above the, be the belly button, and Robert Byrne is having a heck of a time <laughs> defining what's a low blow, because, you know, he's got to imagine where that belly button is. The second thing, we talk about ring generalship and we talk about scoring. Watch Ronald Wiki Wright take a step to the side. He sets up Candelo with beautiful ring generalship, and then he lets go with the left hand. HB 
Tokyo Sports Executive Producer Rick Bernstein suggesting to me via the earpiece that perhaps a referee could use a Sharpie, and there's an endorsement, a Sharpie, to mark a line on the boxer's trunks showing him where the belly button is. Of course, if I'm JC, I don't want a black Sharpie line on my gorgeous gold trunks. But I might not want to get hit low either. Round four looks very much like its predecessors so far. Wright gets in a solid left cross. Candelo's last four fights have gone the distance. So you know that he is schooled for this kind of action. And he has the stamina. Whoa, boy, is he putting on the next... <laughs> Exhibition of combination one down low, another upstairs. What an energy level! <laughs> and Wright just sort of waits it out. And finally, when Candelo finishes with all that virtuoso combination punch throwing, Wright steps forward and whacks him in the ribcage. Maybe some of those people that make the low-rise jeans for women ought to start making boxing trunks so we can see the belly buttons of the fighters. You don't want to see those guys' belly buttons. <laughs> Believe me. I think you're right, George. Let's keep it the way it is. Wright and Candelo both looking at referee Robert Bird. And Bird stands there as if to say, go ahead and fight. I've lost track of where the low blows are. Yeah, for the rest of the fight, okay? Just keep working like that. Keep working. There you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Larry, show us uh, an outline of the, the top level of the 154-pound division. Well, Oscar De La Hoya is a recognized champion. Winky Wright has a title. Daniel Santos of Puerto Rico, a highly regarded challenger. Uh, Shane Mosley, who could be fighting Oscar De La Hoya in the fall. Um, Castileo, the Spaniard, who uh, fought uh, De La Hoya and uh, gave a good account of himself, is another one of these junior middleweights. Every time. Back to that jab. Back to that jab. Back to that jab. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Okay. Jam, Happy box numbers in round four. J.C. Candelo throwing 115 punches in that round. And landing 19 as his connect percentage starts to go up. Wright 17 out of 67, but Winky Wright sort of offensively took the round off as Candelo was spewing like a Roman candle. Round five begins. No significant change in the fight so far other than that Candelo's accuracy rate is beginning to rise a little, landing more punches. And Harold Letterman, as you saw, gave that round to J.C. Now Wright begins to open up offensively again. Tonight, Wink has been just a bit too active for a challenger to take his title. All of the combinations are in order. Steps out of the way when he's being pursued with hard shots. Some nights you're on and some nights you're not, but he's on tonight. Winky Wright. Well, he really hasn't had a bad moment since the last three rounds of the Vargas fight, when what appeared to be a sure upset victory slipped away as Vargas doubled Wright's punch output over the course of those last three rounds and reeled him in to win a razor-thin decision in Lincoln City, Oregon. Wright's been looking for the rematch ever since. There seems to be blood on the ear, or is that something red on the uh, I think that's Candela. a sparkle. I think that's sparkle. a sparkle from his trunks. Oh, okay. It isn't blood. It's something else red on uh, underneath the ear of J.C. Candelo. Hey, 
And to use a Shakespeare line, it stands out like a ruby in an Ethiop's ear. <laughs> That Vargas fight for uh, Ronald Winky Wright was December 4, 1999. He's been dominant in all of his fights since then. Solid oh, left by right. That hurt. Candelo has tried better find some room to move around now because he's starting to be a uh, punching bag. Oh, look at the accuracy of Wright as he says pop, pop, pop with that right hand. Candelo has taken a bit of a beating in this round. Winky Wright apparently got sufficient rest in round four while limiting his offensive output. Came out here and put a hurt on J.C. Candelo in the fifth. Winky's got his legs way apart. There's a look at Roy Jones, dressed tonight in Carolina blue in honor of his uh, business partner, Michael Jordan, and uh, his friends at Nike. We've been here shooting a documentary about Roy Jones Jr. as he gets ready for this huge step in his career, fighting John Ruiz, who outweighs him by 36, 37 pounds going into the ring. Here are a couple of other famous Middleweight champions who uh, took shots at the heavyweight champion. Bob Simmons actually beat Jim Corbett, who weighed just 183 pounds. Ketchel lost to Jack Johnson after knocking him down. A much bigger spread in the weights between them. In those days, the early days of the last century, it was not uncommon for fighters uh, to fight fighters bigger than them because the big guys weren't generally as big. Uh, that much bigger than the middleweights and the light heavyweights. Winky Wright's only six pounds away from being a middleweight, for frame of reference. You know, Ezra Charles started his career as a middleweight, never won a middleweight championship, never won a light heavyweight championship, although he's regarded as perhaps the best light heavyweight of all, and he went on to win a heavyweight championship. Did you see Ezra Charles, George? No, I've never saw him fight. Never saw one of his boxing a little before my time. Should have known that, of course. You're my age. <laughs> Just a little, not much. How dominant was Winky Wright in round five? Well, he landed 31 out of 84 punches by CompuBox numbers. He limited Candelo to 9 out of 73. Wright, 16 out of 52 jabs, 15 out of 32 power shots. In short, it was a vintage Winky Wright round. Now let's see if Candelo can shift the tide again here in the sixth. Candelo never gives up, takes a beating, comes right back at you with something. Winky gives out a lot of punishment, and he seems to think now I can coast. Then this guy, Candelo, comes right back in his chest, throwing shots. Winky's got a mouse under his right eye, which is swelling and discoloring and could eventually lead to some blood seepage. Whoa, a right hand by Candelo. Good one. Good right hand. That one was glancing, but it landed again. Boy, that right jab, Winky Wright is taking the toll. Candelo keeps pounding with his straight right, trying to loosen Wright's guard. Oh, another right hand. And there's a big right hand land for Candelo. Wright backs up. You don't often see Winky Wright step back, but he did there. This is some um, fierce action. Both fighters another good right and a left. Close themselves on each other right here. Candelo is starting to get in combination. Absolutely, landing punches two at a time now instead of one at a time. J.C. Candelo mounting his best offensive thrust of the fight, and another right lands there, and he's catching right right on the end of these punches, George. He's one fellow who believes in himself. Takes Winky's right best shot and steps right in. Well, you got to believe in yourself if you're going to leave your Colombian national team behind, speaking not a word of English, and go to Atlanta looking for a new life, not knowing anybody. That's what Candelo did. They are trading shots here in round six. And J.C. Candelo in this round 
has re-established himself in the fight. That right hand he's got, he's got steam on it. And Wright says to him in the middle of the ring as the bell sounds, way to go. No problem. Show him the left hand a little more now. Yeah. Show him that left hand a little more. Breathe, breathe deep, couple deep ones, come on. That's it, relax. Relax. Hey, bro. When you jab, wait, when you jab and you step a half, step back, come back with the jab and the left hand, okay. and the hook, bring the hook up. Okay. Walk in on you, keep those punches deep straight. Deep breath. Okay, that right hand's working, I want double up and triple up on it, okay? The second one's what comes with the heat. Here we go, the second DC. one, Here we okay, go. get him tall with that right hand. Okay, deep breath. Start, start getting Sound on that body now, start getting on that body. Start that killing round, that don't body. Give him this next round right hand, do right not give him this round right off. Right hand, right hand. Here we go, here we go. He's hurt now, up. finish you the fuck out do. You can sense in Candelo's corner that they believe they're back into the fight big time. Well, in, in round six by CompuBox numbers, Candelo had a 16 to two edge in Power Connects. So no question he won the round, or at least so it appeared to me. Let's see what Harold Letterman thought as right wobbles Candelo with the left hand. Okay, Jim, I agree 100%. Four rounds to two, 58-56, rattled Winky Wright. He had a good round, JC had a good round in round number four. Certainly had an excellent round, style of, you know, throwing that straight right hand in round number six. But obviously in the seventh round, Winky Wright's going back to work again. So four to two, Winky Wright. Wright is obviously not a heavy puncher. We're, most of his fights have ended through attrition, uh, just breaking fighters down with his conviction. And his resiliency, and also his craft. Let's face it, he's a well-schooled fighter. That Candelo has got a good right hand. He's just not using it enough. If he leads with it, he can change everything. Well, I think he may have been a little discouraged by Wright's assault in the first minute of this round. But Candelo has heart. He's proven that. Now he gets a little bit of a rest, reaching out to hold on to Wright. Oh, it was Wright holding on. Yeah, maybe you think so? Yep, yeah, it was Wright. All right, I'll take your word for it. Boy, if we had a main event like this, the crowd would be st standing and cheering and roaring. They ought to be for this. These two fighters are giving up <laughs> a whale of a show. Look at the heart and will of J.C. Candelo. Blood coming from Candelo's nose. It's going to be flowing from under Wright's eye pretty soon if Candelo keeps landing power shots. Candelo is a skinny mini, but he can punch, I tell you. Ooh, good right, right hand by Candelo. Wright walks right through it. Look at the body punishment both guys are dealing as Wright continues to just back Candelo up, back him up. Wright takes one breather. This guy jumps right on it. And vice versa. Don't pause in this fight. You're about to get whacked. Oh, we got a bell, guys. Bell. I was thinking, how is this guy taking all of these punches? Brutal seventh round. Let's look ahead to another pay-per-view boxing match. His desire made him a champion. Now his pride gives a dangerous opponent one last shot at greatness. Marco Antonio Barrera. It's about honor. Kevin Kelly. Barrera is mine. For the featherweight championship of the world. Barrera versus Kelly. Saturday, April 12th, live on pay-per-view. Contact your pay-per-view provider to order. It's about winning. Put it on. Right hand and keep working. Okay, no more. All, all you do is take a break. Okay, don't give the rounds that way. Okay? Punch with him the whole time. Punch with him the whole time. Here we go, JC. You're a better fighter than him. Way better I don't fighter. Box Let's with go. Him. Don't fight him. Start fighting. Okay. 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 
jab. Don't let him get so hey, close. Keep popping with the jab. Jab, jab, jab all the time, baby. Candela's young trainer, Trevor Whitman, asking his fighter to just keep fighting with Winky Wright. Trade with him. Keep the pressure on. Candela throwing well over 100 punches again in that round. For the record, the junior middleweight record for punches thrown in a round, 166 by Kasim Uma. Candela hasn't been close to that yet. Whoa! You can't ask your ref for the looking out for you, not in this fight. The ref doesn't see anything. Laissez fair. Coming into the fight, Candelo said they weren't going to try to knock the door down. They were going to just try to open it up and go through it. But it sure looks to me like he's trying to knock it down here. Oh, no, 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 no! Get him out. Seldom you see two guys evenly matched. I mean, one has got one thing better, and the other has another thing, but they're certainly evenly matched. Winky is playing the part of the boxer now, the smart boxer. Hit and get away. And that's what his corner asked him to do between rounds. For the first time, trainer Dan Birmingham said to Winky between rounds, look, move in, do your damage, and then move back out. Stop staying in there and keeping the pressure on because you're getting hit in return. Well, this guy smells blood when you move away from him. Candelo start thinking you're oh, afraid, no, no, you're no. hurt. So he follows you. And he, he brings the thunder on. Turns that right hand over, I tell you. Good jab, Winky. Stepping around with his jab. Yep, four hard jabs from Winky, right? right I got you. Ah, 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 ah. Candelo. Let him up, let him out, stop. Step out, let's go. Candelo's eight baby land up two good effective left hooks tonight. He can get in three good. I mean, he can change things. Don't lean on, don't lean on, let him up. Let him up. Round eight has been the slowest of the fight. Maybe both guys Time. catching a little bit of a breather to get ready for the home stretch. And now let's go live into Roy Jones's dressing room where he's just about to step on our unofficial HBO scale. And you can see there Nevada State Athletic Commission Executive Director Mark Ratner. And he says that Roy Jones with his boxing gear on Weighs 199. That's what I fell back when I was doing it. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And now Mackie Shulstone, the conditioning specialist who was brought in to help prepare Roy for this fight, is apparently telling Ratner he doesn't agree with the weight. Roy Jones manages and promotes uh, Candelo. Uh, Try to keep excuse me, Winky Wright. Now that's strictly a business deal, but it's a very good deal for Winky Wright because uh, Jones has uh, gotten him this kind of exposure. Jones has been very generous with helping friends like Smoke Gainer before this, a featherweight titleist. Uh, he's really been uh, what they call a mensch which is rare. Well, and, and not to mention that, of course, <laughs> former middleweight star Gerald McClellan sits in a darkened room in Illinois, badly damaged by his fight with Nigel Benn, and McClellan's sisters have said publicly that no one has done more for their brother than Roy Jones. He does feel for the fighters who wouldn't get the, the opportunities uh, if someone like him didn't sponsor them. Wink is going to have to use a lot of skill tonight to keep himself out of trouble. He's trying to take a little 
coasting, doing a little coasting tonight, and that's not going to get him in a lot of shape. But he's going to have to bob, weave, step out of the way. This man is coming after him, Candelo. Wherever he's come from, he's come strong. Wright is allowing Candelo to set the pace of the fight at this point. Standing back, countering Candelo as he comes in. Candelo threw only 66 punches in the last round. That was his lowest output of the fight. Wright seems to be saying, okay, I'll look and see what he's got in this round. Before I extend myself. Boom. Combination. Uppercut. Wink has been able to land all the shots he's wanted to land, but they just haven't had the effect that he wanted to have. As that left hook and the follow-up with a straight right hand by Candela. And while they continue to fight here, let me just briefly go back to the scene in the dressing room and correct myself. Apparently, Mackie Shillstone was not disputing the weight of 199, but rather saying, see, I told you so. I told you Roy would gain weight from his previous weight of 193. And Jones did not have anything in his pockets to add extra weight, according to our observers there in the dressing room. Now back to this fight where Wright once again steps in close on Candelo and begins to apply pressure. And Candelo keeps throwing in return. That was that lead right hand for the first time tonight by Candelo. Racking Winky Wright. And Winky Wright is holding on for some good reason. Candelo whacking with the right to the body. Winky Wright chopping inside with the left. Good right hook by Wright. This is hard work, guys. Not an easy fight. Great round there, champ. That was a great round. Great round. That was a great round. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Chris! You got too much longer, champ. You got to keep doing what you're doing. Round <laughs> ten. That circle jab's working. Yeah. When you double, triple the jab. Give them the angles inside, champ. Keep your hands high. At the chest, all day. Uh, at okay. the chest, JC. That's he it, right there. Type of a fight. He does not want to fight with you. Here we okay. go, JC. Come on. You know what you got to do. You know what you got to do. It's time to get busy. Right, this last ten rounds are yours. This is ten. We got three more. Here we go. These three are yours. More. Okay. Three more. You got to fight, He's fight, fight. You the okay. whole combinations, combinations. Here we go, combinations. JC. You know what you got to do. In round nine, JC Candelo's punch output went round back 10. up to 98. He landed round 20. Two. Winky Wright, 22 out of 73. We come to the final three rounds of a bout in which both fighters have given a lot. Harold, how do you have it scored? Okay, Jim. I thought J.C. Candela made it a little bit uh, closer in round number nine. Uh, six to three, 87, 84. Wiki right. J.C. won, certainly won rounds four, won round six, and he won a ninth round. Punch it out. Punch it out. Let's took work. it into the middle of the ring like they are now stop, and landed nice stop, straight right stop, hands. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Meanwhile, Wright is trying to have a conversation oh, okay. with Robert Bird, and he's holding Candelo while Candelo simply walks him across the ring, throwing punches at his body. Now Bird and Wright have finished their business, and we go back to the center of the ring. What happened to all that ring generalship then? <laughs> and George, incidentally, I'm sure that Bob Costas uh, and company will be covering this as soon as we leave this fight and go back upstairs. On this evening, the walkouts could have taken place as early as 45 minutes from now. John Ruiz is not in the building yet. Roy Jones has been here almost an hour. That's not good, especially for promoters. <laughs> and and, and it, it, how can it be good for Ruiz? Doesn't he need time to relax and focus and get ready for the event? No, I think the, the, the greatest effect is on the promoters. They you like for the fighters to be on scene, on the scene of the crime, getting ready so everything's in hand. So it's mostly a worry for Don King, huh? Yeah, a promoter, but it's not going to hurt the fighter. You sit in a car, you sit in a hotel, you sit in a dressing room. You think it's it'll, no different. You think it'll turn Don's hair gray? You make it stand <laughs> up on end? It'll probably stand up. Yeah. <laughs> if we see him and he looks that way, we'll know it'll be because Ruiz was there, right? Let's go.
has that right hand that Candelo continuously yeah, yeah, tried yeah, to get yeah, in yeah. there with. Winky, stop worrying about his head. Hey, and five, son, let's go. Box. Boy, the thunder is getting heavy and heavy with Candelo. Let him go, Wink. Wink is deciding he's better hold on as much as he can. Well, Candelo, by and large, doesn't tire, apparently. I mean, there are moments here and there when he'll slow down for a little while, but by and large, he just sustains an unbelievable energy level all the way through the fight. And you wonder where a guy's getting that kind of energy from. You keep asking yourself, I've hurt him, I've beat him in the body, I've hit him in the chest, and he keeps coming back. He with trains power. in Denver. Altitude may be one explanation. Yeah, this is why it's very difficult for a fighter to hold on to his title for an extended period of time. Somebody like a J.C. Candelo shows up. shows up in fabulous condition and tests you, and if you haven't stayed on top of it, you wind up being an ex-champion. <laughs> There's Michael Spinks, seated at ringside to see if Roy Jones can duplicate his feat of coming up from light heavyweight to win a heavyweight title belt in Spinks' case, he won the linear heavyweight championship from Larry Holmes. That's not exactly what's at stake for Jones. Michael Spinks was six feet, two and a half inches tall. Emmanuel Stewart keeps pointing that out. A different kind of physical specimen than Roy Jones. Larry? In the last half century, Foster and Spinks have been the only light heavyweights. The challenge for the bigger heavyweights coming along, Foster losing to Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali and Spinks beating an older Larry Holmes past his prime. Uh, you can see some of the weights that Spinks had in other heavyweight fights. And incidentally, Spinks gave up 30 pounds to Jerry Cooney and savagely knocked him out. One of several examples of how the smaller man can in fact knock out the bigger man if he attacks and seizes the initiative. Again, you know, the difference in what we're going to see tonight is they were outstanding light heavyweights fighting outstanding recognized heavyweight champions. The champion heavyweight champions were always favored. Tonight, the challenger, Jones, is the favorite. Meanwhile, we're in the 11th round of what may be a close Fight for Winky Wright's share of the 154-pound title as J.C. Candelo has pressured him up to this point. But Wright is taking over here in the 11th round and driving Candelo back with a sustained attack. Candelo is kind of smart. That's the way he make a guy uses a little of his energy he saved up for the last couple of rounds. He knows what he's doing. Oh, I don't like it. He's more or less given Wright the first minute of the 11th round. Now let's see if Candelo will try to come back thinking that perhaps Wright has expended some of his energy. Both of those last right hands blocked. were blocked by Wright. That is one of the things at which Winky Wright is as adept as any fighter. Wright appears to be staving off a very stiff challenge tonight. And I'm sure George Foreman is sitting here thinking, that's that right hand again. Winky shouldn't count his skit chickens before they're hatched. No. <laughs> it's this guy, huh? This guy's got that right hand and he never loses the power out of it. He's throwing it with the same power that he threw in the first round. Candelo's got the power. Straight right hand by Candelo, right down the pipe. Winky Wright beginning to paw a little bit with his right hand. Just trying to keep Candelo off of him.
Well, except for the flurry of low blows early for a fight between a conventional fighter and a southpaw, it's been pretty doggone clean. Let's go to Fran Charles for a report from the John Ruiz dressing room. All right, Jim. Well, as you just mentioned, we are inside John Ruiz's dressing room, and as you can see, nobody's here. Ruiz is not here. Members of his camp are not here. And John Ruiz, they knew that he could walk into the ring at 8 p.m. Pacific time, so it doesn't leave that much time for him to get get ready and get prepared to do what he has to do. The heavyweight champ not here at this particular moment. We'll keep an eye on it and see and let you know as soon as he arrives. Let's send it back now to Jim Lampley, ringside. Don't even make it be clumped. Prediction, George. Whenever Ruiz gets here, however long it takes, they'll give him all the time he needs to warm up, correct? No doubt about it. Okay, here we go. The golden rule. Well, as the saying go, I, ju I just think he's trying to bust some some people's chops here. Incidentally, we're told there are a number of automobile accidents in the area, and that may help to account for Ruiz's tardiness. Snag traffic all around the Thomas and Mack Center. Right, 25 out of 70 in the 11th round. Candelo, 16 out of 86. So Candelo was still throwing, but Wright was the one who was landing. Harold, how do you have it? To win this fight, or at least to pull out a draw, and certainly he didn't win it. Uh, round 11 went to Winky Wright. I've got it seven rounds to four. 106, 103, Ronald Winky Wright. I mean, he's just doing too much with that, that right jab, that straight left hand, the beautiful ring generalship. He sets him up with it. Good defense because J.C. Candelo has been missing a lot of right hands. Winky Wright winning the fight. The 11th round may turn out to be the critical frame in the fight because Candelo had an opportunity, or so it appeared, coming into these last two rounds. But with the fight on the table, Winky Wright went back to his craft and commanded. This fight has been a bit of a car wreck. Head-on collisions for 12 rounds. There is, uh, incidentally, a NASCAR race here in Las Vegas on Sunday. Very Town is very crowded. It's been uh, raining, so uh, perhaps that accounts for some of the accidents whoa, 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 that Jason, Jim referred to. JC has given it all he's got. He didn't have a whole lot, but he gave it all, I guess, in the first 10 rounds. J.C. still chasing, but his punch output has dropped. Yeah. And Winky Wright is commanding the ring now, trying to salt this victory away by staying out of harm's way and popping Candelo on those moments when he gets close. Winky even turned to traditional and away from the southpaw position. I think Winky realizes and he probably sealed the deal in the 11th. And he's just safely playing out the string here. But it was a good fight. Very good fight. This is the Winky right before he fought Vargas. And then Candelo, we got another star, a star is born. Up, These up, guys come out up, of nowhere. He is an action fighter. Let's go. In a division crowded with stars. Had not been a softball in Winky Wright, he would have had a knockout tonight. Oscar De La Hoya fights at 154 pounds. Fernando Vargas. Hi! Shane Mosley fights at 154 pounds. Felix Trinidad, if he comes back, will probably fight at 154 pounds. Bernard Hopkins calls out 154-pound fighters. And Winky Wright, lost in the crowd, can't get the big fights that he wants. Is he too good for his own good? Maybe. Well, what we saw tonight is a very tough well-schooled fighter good on defense takes a shot um, no no walk in the park for anybody who's going to fight him they go the distance as winky wright seeks the 45th victory of his career Come 
his only losses against Julio Vasquez in France and Harry Simon in South Africa. So Winky's never lost fighting here in the United States, except, of course, for the controversial loss to Vargas in Lincoln City, Oregon. And incidentally, we at HBO did not believe that Wright won the Vargas fight. Harold Letterman's scorecard had Vargas winning, as did those of the official uh, scorers, I believe. Is that not right, Harold? I had Winky Wright winning. I had Winky winning. Oh, winning, okay. All right. Well, I take that one back. Now let's go see who won this one from Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judges at ringside, Glenn Habada and Al Munoz, both scored about 117 to 111. Judge Paul Smith sees the bout 118 to 110. All three in favor of the winner and still champion, Ronald Winky Wright. Another victory for Winky. He's 45 wins, three losses, and still waiting for the fights that he thinks could define his career. Final copy box numbers. We'll show the patient, disciplined right landed 283 out of 907, 31 percent. Candelo threw nearly 100 punches per round, but landed only 16 percent of them by CompuBox estimate. Jabs, a category. John Ruiz against Roy Jones Jr. Jones three knockouts. As we take a look at his last five, he went four and one in that stretch, and here's a closer look at that last five.